Welcome back, everybody, to the Classic Firearms Podcast. I am Clint. We've got Katie back with us. How's it going, guys? And we've got two very special guests with us today that I am happy to introduce. We've got our buddy Adam from Century Arms. How's it going, guys? Dude, we are so happy to have you here. And we've got, uh, you know, I, I hope you're okay with me saying this, but I want to call, I want to consider you a, a legend in this community. <laughs> All right, we've got Larry Vickers with us, and I, I'm thrilled to have you here, man. I appreciate it. I love coming over and seeing you guys. Ever seen any old facility? Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, uh, the the new warehouse is a little bit different. Mm -hmm. uh, this whole table that we're sitting at right now would not fit in the old video room. No, <laughs> but uh, but no, we're we're happy to be here, and uh, let's just let's go ahead and hop into this really quick. I just want to say that when even though I didn't know anything when I started out, I knew who he was. Oh yeah. <laughs> yes. When I started out, I knew no one. Yeah. Knew, well, well, Larry, you've been in was. this this area. I mean, you've lived here for quite some time now. Yeah, right? six years. Yeah. It, yeah, six years. Got and over in the Charlotte area around 2016. And prior to that, I was in Fayetteville because I retired right. out of the Army in Fayetteville. Vietnam. Was, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And you've, know ben, you've known Ben for quite some time, too, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Because last time, like the first time I met you, you, were, we, you came over to the old way house to grab a couple of barrels for uh, some BM-59s. BM-59s, yeah. Yeah. Did you ever do anything with those? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, they got built out. One was for a buddy. Yeah. And then one was for me, and they got built out. Yeah. yeah. Heck yeah, man. Well, well that's awesome. Uh, so, yeah. So we've got you. You know what, Larry? Let's just go ahead and uh, let's talk about you a little bit because some of our viewers, you know, they might not, or listeners, uh, they might not know or anything else sure. like that. You mind giving us a little bit of background, introduce yourself? Um, some? Been in the gun industry for a long time now. Retired out of special operations in 2003. I was in Delta Force for 15 years. Yeah. Um, kind of started in this industry working on 1911s. Yeah. Good friends with a lot of the people still in the 1911 industry. Bill Wilson, my buddy Ken Hackathorn, yeah. guys that were, you know, household names in the firearms industry in the 1911 side of the house. And then I expanded from there and started doing training, a lot of pistol training, and then kind of doing carbine, AK stuff, some home defense, you know, style training and CQB and whatnot. Yeah. Really specializing on self-defense pistol and in carbine would be really where it's at. And then we launched a number of years ago, launched a series of coffee table books. Mm -hmm. yep. A guy contacted me out of the blue who ended up being my co-author and does the photos. Yeah. Um, and I've just been busy. Now, lately, I uh, dealt with cancer yes. last year. Um, and and how's, that, how's that going? That's going good. I'm in remission. It's Great. sad story is it really ravaged my former unit because in Delta, we were exposed to a lot of caustic chemicals over the years, mm -hmm. everything from flashbangs and, and door charges on down right. uh, the line. And uh, man, there's a lot of guys in the unit I know that have died from cancer or sick from cancer. Oh, here's so, to them. Yeah, yeah. Here's yeah to absolutely. Them. I, I agree. So that's kind of one of those things that's going on behind the scenes. And I mean... Since I got it, at two or three guys have passed away. Oh man! And so it's yeah. yeah. But I, fortunately for me, it's in remission. Things are going well. And then I've traveled so much for so long along the lines of this guy right here. <laughs> yeah, Adam. The Adam wife, gets around. Yeah. yeah. When the cancer kind of died down, the wife kind of talked to me and had to come to Jesus with me about our family. About hey, you got to take a step back from traveling. Yeah. You got to focus on family. So I've been doing that. That being said, I'm dying to get back out in the industry. Yeah. I, I mean, I just love talking guns. I love gun people. I'm not, I'm hoping, crossing fingers, I'll be at SHOT Show this year. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I'm hoping to. Yeah. So, but that's it in a nutshell. I'm here uh, looking forward to talk guns with you guys, man. Oh, absolutely. I well, we, it. yeah, well, you know, we know that you had some uh, development work on like the HK416 and, and 45, which is really cool. And I know a lot of our viewers are love those two platforms, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, uh, you know, we've got a couple of... Uh, HK types in front of yeah. us as well here. And we can get Adam actually to talk a little bit about that. And Adam actually introduce yourself some, man. I know, I know if, if we've got listeners that have been watching the channel for any length of time, they've definitely seen you. Right. Uh, yeah. So, <laughs> so been in the industry a little over 10 years now, yeah. um, started, uh, actually as the CMO of Palmetto state armory, yeah. um, was fortunate enough to be a part of the growth there. That really is the monster it is today and still have some amazing lifelong friends that work there, that the ownership and just wouldn't be where I am today if it wasn't for them. Right. Uh, then transferred over actually to what Larry was saying. I actually took about a year and a half off from the industry and mm -hmm. I missed it. I, I, as much as we gripe and complain about oh, what we yeah. have to deal with <laughs> in this industry, both from, you know, people that are customers, people yeah. that are in the industry, 
there's nothing like it. The yeah, sense of no. community, the sense mm-hmm. of brotherhood, yeah. the sense of belonging and doing something that you're actually passionate about makes it a lot easier mm-hmm. to get up every day and go to work. Agreed. And there's nothing like it in the world. So I came back. I started with Century Arms in Canic. I've yeah. uh, been there about three and a half years now, and it's been something that has been truly a blessing. Um, Century is continuously pushing the edge in terms of the imports and what we're developing, things like the AP5 that we'll talk about in a minute. And then Canic has just been a monster. Yeah. You know, the, the amount of growth uh, just in the three and a half years that we've been there, we've seen it go, you know, 10x, which is just absolutely unbelievable to be a part of something that truly people are passionate about. And I get to do things like this. I mean, mm-hmm. my job doesn't suck. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> right. when, when we're sitting here, like you said, with good people like you and icons in the industry like Larry, that's also a personal friend. And then later today, we're going to go put lead down range. Yeah, that's yes. absolutely right. We it's are. not a bad day. You know, I could no. be sitting in a cubicle selling insurance. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. yeah. So, mm-hmm. so yeah, so that's my story. Yeah, I got you, man. Well, of course, uh, you know, everybody, everybody should already know Katie. We did a little bit of an intro last yeah. time, you know, <laughs> uh, but, but yeah, so no, I mean, dude, absolute pleasure having you both here, but now let's go ahead and talk about some of the stuff we're, we've got here in front of us. Cause we've got your AP five P right. And I've got the AP five, the full length over here. Um, my personal one that I absolutely love and, uh, Larry, what, what has your experience been with, with the AP five so far? Cause as of right now, I've seen on your Instagram and stuff that yeah. you're, you're thinking pretty highly of it. A very high of it a big fan I mean, i've got a ton of time behind the mp5 when i went through yeah. otc and delta that was our primary we trained on was the mp5 for cqb oh that's cool mm-hmm. and then uh we're talking late 80s mm-hmm. um and then when we got to squadron then we basically went to car 15 we yes. built car 15 my, my colt model 723 which was a fantastic platform big mm-hmm. fan of it but we still always used mp5s um, i gotta believe they still have them i mean it's the iconic submachine gun. I was talking to a friend of mine not long ago. To this day, if I had to pick a submachine gun to use, it would be the MP5. And yeah. why is that? We were actually talking yeah. about that yesterday. Why is it such, not only iconic, but why is it so useful? Just go ahead. It's, yeah. You know, it's, it's a scaled-down G3, mm-hmm. right? But there's something about the combination of the caliber, the size, the weight, the controllability that it brings together in nine mil that honestly it doesn't necessarily bring together so much in other calibers. Mm. I mean, not that the other guns are bad by any means, but that it just, it's kind of like everything lined up. The good example I like to use is kind of like the Glock 19. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just one of those things where everything kind of lined up the size of it and everything. And in that midsize, you know, not necessarily compact, but midsize duty pistol, if you will, that you can uses a duty pistol or you can carry it concealed it's still the benchmark same thing with the mp5 i yeah. mean it's a gun that incredibly controllable to shoot you can take like my buddy ken hackathorn said you can take a brand new shooter somebody who's never fought shot a firearm before and in in an afternoon you can have them at least bare you know at a bare minimum competency with an mp5 they're just so incredibly easy to shoot for what they are they're they're lightweight easy to handle mm-hmm. um they're reliable guns I mean, just, it's like every, the stars all align when this gun was made. Because I've thought the same thing before. Is why is this gun so special compared to, let's say, the G3, which is a great gun, or the 5.56 HK roller lock guns or whatnot. And it's just like a combination of things all came together. The stars all align with the MP5 and the 9 millimeter in this platform. Mm. Yeah. And, and you're absolutely right, too, about, like, new shooters getting a hold of this because it is... I mean, it's one of the softest recoiling guns I've ever shot, right? I mean, Katie, we did a video where we yeah. cons- we compared like a uh, what the Sig Rattler 300 mm-hmm. Blackout, you know, because 300 Blackout, sure, it's a superior cartridge, but what really are the pros and cons that you're getting over that? You know what I mean? And uh, but you you preferred still the MP5, oh, right? Oh, 100 percent. Yeah, and that roller delay design. I mean, so yeah, no, you, you're absolutely right about that. Now. If, if if it's cool, let's caveat to something kind of funny because you talked about the G3 and the 5.56 and, and things like that. I saw something on your uh, Instagram not too long Just ago. Just rub salt in the wound. <laughs> I already know where this is going. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> look, look, look. You know, if we can't talk about it, it's fine, but... It's already on the internet now, and you know it lives in infamy. So thanks, Larry. Yeah, yeah, so, oh, so thanks. Funny. So so tell us what what is this? What what was so, it? So as Larry so eloquently did the reveal, I guess he's the head of marketing at Century now. Um, <laughs> we are coming out with uh, a collaboration with MKE out yeah. of Turkey of a five five six and a three oh eight version 
of mm. these guns. Um, and we make sure that we have a lot of industry experts test these guns in advance, you know, go through everything that may be pitfalls, things we need to advance, things we need to keep an eye on in terms of quality control. Yep. And a couple of these guns were in hands of an individual that is very, very uh, highly regarded. And he then being, you know, that the industry is a family, took him to Larry to get his opinion. Mm -hmm. And Larry decided, because, you know, a lot of 90-year-old men want to put things on their Instagram out the gate. And this 90-year-old man over here decided that he wanted to be the first. And boy, was he uh, about six months early and putting these on the Internet. And so all of a sudden I started getting phone calls. And, uh -huh. and uh, yeah, and let's just say the text message I sent to him wasn't exactly the most uh, pleasant. And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. You want me to take it down? And I was like, it's been up for two days. What yeah. are we going to do now? Yeah. yeah, that's right. But, yeah, so we are going to be coming out with that. Uh, we're still working to make sure that we're completely compliant, yeah. that everything is going to be top notch, that the quality is going to be there. Um, they have been there on these guns. And I think oh, – yeah. Yes. And I think that's one of the things I want Larry to speak of and what he's yeah. seen with it. Um, and that was kind of, from what I understand, Larry, why you posted it, because you were impressed oh, absolutely. by absolutely. Super impressed by the quality. Yeah, so I mean, yeah. and you can kind of take it from there, what you've seen in the AP5 and the 9mm, as well as what you'll see in the, uh, the AP6, that's hypothetically. That's what we're calling it, AP6. And, yeah, that'll okay. be one of them. And then, uh, you know, there will also be a, a, a 762 by 51 version. So can well. we just assume the AP7? Because that mm. kind of makes sense. Uh, maybe, right? maybe. So, <laughs> maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> no. Hey, you know, right off the bat, Adam, we got to let everybody know this: these guns are made at an HK licensed facility on HK provided tooling. People Correct. need to know yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, and that's what he said. It's the same metallurgy, the same technical data package. And not only that, it's licensed and held accountable by, like you said, the HK facilities. Yep. Uh, and, and that's the thing. So, you know, when we put it in people's hands like Larry and stuff, we can, we can feel confident that not only is there interchangeable in terms of the parts, right. but also the quality and control that you're going to go to expect from, you know, the original mm -hmm. is going to be reflected here. And we're fortunate enough to be able to do it in the volume and with the with the current deal we have, that it's a very uh, approachable price point, which right. is I think something huge. You know, everybody's wanted one of these guns since they were a kid, oh, yes. um, or since they you know used them in the military with a government price tag that was a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, you didn't have to concern yourself with you know doing it on on a government oh, salary, time, yeah. Right. Right, but you now, issue, but now they're attainable. Yes, yep. sir. Yeah, and you said you told me that you've got what fifteen thousand rounds to one. I do. So I got one of the original ones in, in the first ones in the country, and it was a demo. We actually launched it at uh, the event in Savannah, Georgia, the Big Daddy Unlimited event. Yeah. I guess a year and a half ago. Yeah, when it, when it was, and you know. With this gun, I was nervous. You know, everybody, there's a break in period on these guns, especially, you know, about, right. uh, we, we say 250 rounds. Some of them never have an issue. Some right. you got to work all 250 rounds. And and typically it's like a little bit heavier grain, too. Right. right? And I was using steel case. Yeah. You know, threw steel case <laughs> in it. Yeah. And uh, the first mag, we had to hang up, mm. put in a second mag, had to hang up, you know, dropped it out, threw some oil in it, cleaned it up, threw it back in, and it's run like a scalded dog, original Ever extractor, or original firing pin. Um, yeah. And I've never even done a full clean. I want to run this gun to sure, see absolutely. what it'll actually do. Yeah. I want to break it, That's, and yeah. and it's and you know basic basic safety cleaning, but you know right. nothing. Never never completely disassembled it um, and cleaned it, and it's fifteen thousand rounds still 15, running. Fifteen thousand rounds. It's a wow. good example of a gun like an AR in respect. As long as you keep it lubed, generally they'll run like a champ. Now, if yeah. you suppress them, you get a lot more gas back in mm -hmm. action. And that's a little bit different story. You suppress them, you, you got to be more on top of the lube, mm -hmm. and your, your cleaning regimen is going to be more pronounced. But a standard one that's not suppressed, I mean, you can run them filthy and just keep them lubed, and they'll run like a champ. Because I've seen it firsthand. Yeah. Did you hear that, Clint? Yeah, you said I said you're actually going to have to clean it if you use a suppressor. Well, I'm not, this one has been pretty much stayed suppressed. I've got about two or 3,000 rounds to it, and I think I've dropped like a couple of drops of ballistol in it twice, and it's been working all right, so... <laughs> We'll just keep, we'll keep it going, you know. Now, ball do you guys sell ballastol? Uh, I don't know if we sell ballastol or not, but we might have a, a bottle around or two if you need yeah, it. Yeah, no, I but love ballastol. Yeah, I've always loved it. My buddy Ken Hackathorn turned me on to it. Yeah. Isn't the, yeah, it's like Kitty Hawk or somewhere. Ballastol is distributed here in North Carolina. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, I'm pretty sure. Look everywhere? on the bottle. Yeah, I think, or look on the spray can and and see what your uh, see where the address is. I think it's like Kitty Hawk or somewhere here in North oh, wow. Carolina where it's yeah. actually obviously it's made in Germany. Yeah, needless yeah. to say, 
but uh, I think it's distributed here in North Carolina. Oh, that's pretty cool. All right, yeah, well, I'm sweet, a big fan of Ballastol. Yeah, no, for all of our guys out there, too, because that's another question, I guess. I mean, on the channel, you know, we get asked questions all the time. What ear pro? What eye pro? And then, you know, some people say, well, actually, what cleaning and lubrication do you use? And I'm like, oh, I just, I just do Ballastol. I use Ballastol literally for everything. If yep. I want to darken some leather, I spray some Ballastol on it. Oh, I know. know. It's there great stuff. Yeah, you know, it works for everything. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so that's what we use. Spray some Ballastol on your stuff. It'll run It'll run great. But uh, but anyway, so the 5.56, 7.62 gun, it's going to be like the G3 uh, 91, I guess. And yep. then uh, what, what is the HK53? That Was that the 5.56 yeah, gun? Yeah, HK33. 33, 33 okay. 33 and a 33K were the two mm -hmm. that I saw. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. But the 33K is the, that's the hotness. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's the hotness. The, one, the hotness. People are going to be. That's the marketing campaign. That's yeah, it. Right the there. hotness. <laughs> the yeah. hotness. It is. That's the one that everybody's going to be salivating over. And you know, and I think the biggest thing for us, like we were talking about, is making it at a price people can afford. Right. And that, yeah. and so let's, let's talk about that really quick because on the base, uh, AP5, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I mean, you get like the standard in you know, like a uh, polymer four end, mm -hmm. uh, no brace, you know, iron sights. Uh, does it come with the flash hider out of the it box? It does come, uh, yes, it does come with the flash hider. Okay, so you get the Trilug flash hider, which is a super cool thing. It's just a neat look. Yeah. I love the aesthetic of that. Yeah, great. Yeah. Thread cover, you know, yep. tri-lug adapter, yeah. Yeah, because I, I actually, I, I'll be honest with you, my half by 28 thread protector, I've already lost that. Yeah. Um, uh, so I usually I just use my flash hider as my thread protector if I don't have the silencer on. Sure, right. So, yeah. And just leave it Absolutely. at that. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so that keeps the price point down, obviously, as a base gun. But on top of that, now you guys are offering uh, different rail and optics and yeah, brace options. Brace options. Yeah. You know, we're teaming a lot with SB Tactical. We had a couple of different yeah. brace options to include side folding. Yep. Um, we've done some optics setups with companies like Ride On mm -hmm. that are good optics. They just obviously a price point optic um, all the way up to Shield with yeah. a dedicated mount for the Shield that clips directly to clips directly to the. Yeah. Uh, the top of the gun, and then it'll still allow for a co-witness, 100% co-witness, which, which is really unique. That. It was really unique on yes. it. Larry, even you were like, okay, what is That's this? Cool, you know, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, I didn't it's, know it was a shield. I didn't know that. Yeah, and that was something we kind of stumbled across it, and right. we're like, man, this is cool. Yeah. And it's, but it's not cheap. I mean, it's not. I mean, something that's as unique as that, and, and, and quite frankly, it's very, very durable. Yeah. Um, it's tough. Um, is going to have some price associated with it. We're not trying right. to get rich off of that, but there is a cost. So, so we wanted to have the different options, but the reality is you can have now a braced pistol, mm -hmm. a optic ready gun with the optic on it, um, additional mags, some cool furniture, and still get it significantly under the price of what you would pay for the original just as a base model, right? which is something that's cool. And so, yeah, and that's what's really been cool to come here and talk about with you guys is that Classic is now committed to having a number of these SKUs online, yeah. um, which we think is the most important thing. You know, when we first launched this, we weren't sure because it is, we, regardless of if it's a $5,000 gun or a $1,000 gun, mm. $1,000 is still a lot of money to a lot of people. Sure. Oh, it's absolutely. a lot of money to anybody. Yeah. Yeah. And, and if especially it's not, then you need to reevaluate what, you, what your view of money especially is. Especially yeah. in this day and age. Yes, yeah. sir, exactly. Oh, yeah. Um, and so we knew that this was still going to be, uh, when, when somebody wants to buy this, it's still a decision they have to have in their head or with their wife or, yeah. you know. With their husband. With their husband. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so we I, wanted to do something that the value was there that you couldn't argue that it was a good buy. Yeah. Uh, and, Katie, just going to your point, I don't think Hunter's going to complain if you came home with an AP5. I'm just saying. He's no. going to hug you. Like, I, like, I've, <laughs> yeah. like, I've met him, and he's just going to be like, all right, well, I'm going to take this to work now. You know? He's going to be so, like, this is mine, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. This is mine. No, so, all right. So, you no, know, you guys offer all sorts of different variations on the different models. So I've got the full size, mm -hmm. your, your standard here, that I have obviously taken. A lot. I've, I've thrown all the B&T accessories on it. I love the B&T uh, tri-rail. Yeah. It's super sleek and slim. Uh, B&T, Picatinny mount, like the the claw mount you know and i've got a trijicon rmr on mine and uh surefire with a pressure pad and the sb tactical brace uh but you also offer the p which is the threaded k quote right. unquote right and then you also offer the m which doesn't have the threaded barrel and that's the only difference between the p and the m right it's the only difference the same size same setup same rig it's just literally a non-threaded barrel yeah. which as we discussed yeah we're now figuring out so we'll start with the compliant answer Sure. And the compliant answer is there's a lot of states that don't allow, or a lot of states and areas that do not allow you to have a threaded barrel. Right. So, yeah. 
you know, we still want to be able to spread freedom as much as possible mm -hmm. in those areas. And that's a way that you can still attain this, this platform and still meet, yeah. whether we like it or not, meet with local regulations. So, so the M, the AP5M uh -huh. meets those regulations. Right. M for midsize? Uh, it's mini? so mini, yeah, mini. mini. Yeah. So AP five. Oh, AP, I got it. Yeah. So it's yeah. apparatus pistol, uh, yeah. you know, machine pistol. Right. Um, uh, and then AP five P for pistol and then yeah. AP five M for mini. Got it. Um, and then the, the more fun answer, yes. which Larry, I want your opinion on this yes. is the briefcase gun, right? The briefcase gun had to be the non threaded version. Yep. And I mean, I just I want do, to like like anytime I think like James Bond espionage, right? right? I think HK or I think Walter PPK, yep. obviously, and then I'm like, everybody needs a briefcase gun. Everybody, you know? like, needs I mean, a briefcase I, gun. absolutely. So you know, if you guys haven't seen the videos out there of the HK uh, MP5K without the threaded barrel, they have this mechanism inside of a briefcase, and it allows you to activate a trigger through the handle of the briefcase mm -hmm. and dump that mag. And it's like, all right, send it. So, but but Larry, you actually have personal experience with this. Yeah, I've shot it. Yeah, I've shot it before. What? And um, tell us about it. The adapter inside is well made. I'm sure HK makes that with yeah. the adapter that actually takes the MP5K and adapts it in. And they have a brass deflector. And if memory serves me correct, they got a spare mag holder inside it. Oh, that's cool. And that yeah. 15 round mag is kind of set up for that, you know, mm -hmm. for that briefcase gun um, or setup. The problem is. If so, if you guys or anybody looks at doing one, they've got to increase the overall quality of the briefcase itself. Because obviously, HK buys that thing off the shelf and modifies it, and it's poorly made. <laughs> so wait, so you, what you're saying is like HK went to like uh, you know Walmart and bought a briefcase and then put their put their mechanism in there to make this thing shoot. Yep, <laughs> they went to Marshalls. They <laughs> the got Marshalls. those like those 500 of them yeah. they could get at a discount. Yeah, right. they're like, we'll take all of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it. That's right, exactly right. I mean, the latches are very poorly made. Yeah, so it's one of those things, and I saw it with the one I shot is we shot it quite a bit. Yeah. And it, and actually shooting it a lot really started tearing the case up. I believe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The brass deflection, the gases. Mm -hmm. How hard was it to hit anything? Like uh, it, you, it's one of those things you got to tuck an end of the body. Right. You're point shooting. Yeah. yeah. For me to him, no it's problem. It's a get off me gun at that yeah, point. It's, yeah. a, it's a get off me gun. The problem is now with it too, is it would stand out. I mean, if you knew what you're looking for right off the bat, the handles are real big mm -hmm. and you know, it's got a trigger. That would kind of get by, but now no. Show me anybody that's using a briefcase. Yeah, that's right. the problem. Mm -hmm. Now it's a satchel. Yeah, or and you know what I mean. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like redirecting it to a satchel gun would be a better way to go. I got a I got an ADD for a second. Have y'all seen the new the King's Guard, the new guy that's like is trending all over the internet? He's no. just, he's he's the new top security for the for King Charles. Okay. And he's got this huge beard and he looks like some I mean he looks exactly who would be the head of the bodyguards for the king. I mean, out of sure. any movie. Yeah. And he carries an umbrella all the time. Um, and it, there's no rain know. projected yeah. and there's this whole thing, is it an umbrella gun? Yeah. I, I, I'm fascinated by it. Like I, I've been looking at it. I've been trying to figure out if there's a trigger or what. But I mean, it's this long umbrella, and he's walking with it. Dude, I bet you. You know, you know what? What movie was it where you pop that thing open, and you can shoot at it? You know, yeah, I bet, I'm I telling bet, you. I bet it's probably oh, like a it's, certain uh, level of bulletproof. Yeah, or something. what's the name of that movie? I don't even remember. But oh, I can't remember. But, I <laughs> but remember if anybody can find out, if any of your listeners can confirm or deny that this is an umbrella gun, yeah, I will be forever indebted to them because yeah. it is the most fascinating. All right, thing. you know what? Hey, we'll put a bet on it. Your bet is a umbrella gun. My bet is an umbrella shield. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, that's <laughs> <it>. <laughs> <laughs> King, oh, Kingsman. Kingsman. That's that's Kingsman. 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 Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Thank you, Ryan, right. in the back. It could yeah. just like Kingsman. be like a knife at the end of it, though. It also <laughs> could, <laughs> so be yeah. it could be an umbrella. It could be an umbrella. He could just be yeah. hitting people with umbrellas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it could just be an umbrella. Like how, how, how well made is the handle? Because he could just turn around and beat people with it. Yeah, that's true. I haven't. Okay. I actually haven't gotten to talk to him about it. But, <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm just saying, like, you haven't. Have you seen like zoomed in and like look at the pictures? Because I know if I saw it, I would be like. Just take it to the best guy I know, Ryan. Enhance this and tell me what it looks yeah. like. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, getting getting back to some of the guns too, um, Larry. On on your channel, you first of all, you recently passed one million subscribers. Yeah, sure did. So so congratulations nice. to you. that. I appreciate it. Yeah, hopefully hopefully you'll get your uh, gold plaque I before too long. Yeah. C congrats to you guys. Yeah, appreciate that, man. Thank you so much. And uh, you recently did a video on Cabot. Mm -hmm. And you had a, I mean, so our buddy Eli over there, he, I did an interview with him 
uh, you know, he he told me I need to put some hair in my chest and, you know, get a 1911 and all that stuff. Was un- he wrong? Un- unbeknownst to him, I have like five. <laughs> so whatever. I don't have a cabinet. I could probably sell You're all five, five and almost, you know, under yeah, chest, right? get that. Get that. <laughs> so anyway, but, uh, but I mean, how, how'd you like shooting that cabinet? It was great. Yeah. Uh, very impressed with the overall quality. I saw their stuff back in the day and when they first started out and they were nice guns, but they, you know, there's still a learning curve. Mm-hmm. Anytime you start out with a 1911, you know, whether you're a shooter a gunsmith or making them, yeah. there's a learning curve to that gun. Right. I mean, there really is. Mm. Um, but no, I was very impressed with the excellent fit and finish. The machining was excellent. I specifically wanted to get it in that format because I'm a big fan of the nine millimeter lightweight commander flavored mm. 1911. Yeah. That's, that's my favorite. There I mean, is. nine millimeter now rules the world. I know people don't want to hear that, but it's the truth. Mm. Right. You get a commander, with the right mag, it's a 10-in-1 gun. Yeah. We're talking about an 11-shot gun. If you get them set up right, uh, they'll run hollow points like a champ. Mm-hmm. I mean, they're a, they're a hard gun to beat. If you want a thin, lightweight concealed carry pistol or even a, a you know a, a duty gun, right? Mm-hmm. you can run with a 9 millimeter 1911. So I'm a big fan of them. So that's why I specifically requested that gun from the owner of Cabot. Yeah, nice. Now, I sent it back to them for them to be able to have it at shot. Mm-hmm with the video on a loop nice you know but this i'm sure it wasn't this shot because we didn't have the video out in time but yeah. now this next shot if everything goes right they'll be able to have the gun on display with the video on the loop behind it nice nice that, so we that, got that, some nice slow-mo cool. and whatnot yeah on nice. it but no it was a great gun ran yeah. like a champ shot great yeah that's nice. awesome Speaking i'm gonna have to call eli so we can get us you get a he can come right? out here and we can just shoot him yeah there we go uh well actually going back to shot um uh, did you mention something about a, a briefcase that you guys could we're gonna we may we may have a little a little james bond action ourselves little, there. little yeah. uh ap5m briefcase guys hypothetically that, uh, hypothetically hypo, hypo, yeah. hypothetically cool. all right if that's something you can mass produce i'll buy one anyway yeah. uh that means i gotta buy an ap5m too so yeah. here we are or not mass produce it and just give us one give me one <laughs> just give <laughs> my i mean i'll buy it i'll give your husband one instead yeah. there we go yeah Bro. And then, yeah. and, then, and then you got to buy the IP, AP5. Yeah. <laughs> now, that being said, if somebody's got an original HK briefcase, or unless oh. I'm missing something, you'd be able to put the AP5M. Yeah, oh, absolutely. Right I mean, the right specs right. are the yeah. same on it. Yeah. Exactly yeah. the same. So, well, and this too, because, I mean, the, we're running off of the original the original technical data package. Like, mm-hmm. this gun is, you know, obviously the SP5, and so there's just some moderations. I do have a question on this. So we were yesterday, Clint and I were looking at it, and we noticed, for instance, like the grip. Mm-hmm. On this one, it still has the finger grooves and the you know the thumb swell yeah. and some things like that. Do you know why they went away from that on the newer models and stuff? Like we were looking at just a standard like the new SP5. It's even it's, the forward takedown pins. The forward oh, takedown yeah, pins yeah, were takedown. different. The the grip is just yeah, one smooth. smooth. Yeah. Is that just for modularity so that they could mass produce them quicker? What was if the reason? I had to guess. I would say it's a setup where they just wanted to make it more. You know, adaptable, just lo- there you go. Yeah. They wanted to make it more adaptable for a wider variety of, of users. And then they also extended the, the, the thumb safety to the right. selector switch. Yeah. So what you guys have is kind of the original classic setup, which right. personally right. I think really looks cool. I think it's I, I awesome. do too. Well, I, li- I like just the cuts in the, in the grip module anyway. I think yeah. it just looks I good. I agree. Yeah, and the ergonomics behind the grip feels pretty good too. I, I, yeah, I love that original look. Mm-hmm. The, you know, the standard lower was an SCF lower. Yes. And they've changed it to zero one, and then you can see where they blanked out where, where it would have been to 30. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And then uh, another thing I like about it is it only goes to a lot of people would be running one of these or running a similar gun, and the selector would go past. The creep past yeah. it, yeah. Mm-hmm. So I've noticed, I mean, you can force it. You can mm-hmm. definitely force it past, but it, it you got to make an effort. It's not like you're, you're in the heat of in the heat of something, you're going to run it and, and flip it too, right. too aggressively past. By the way, on – before I forget about it, I want end users out there and listeners to think about this is a great home defense gun. Mm-hmm. Oh, a yes. A great home defense mm-hmm. gun. And you can take new shooters. You could take your son, your daughter, your wife, 
don't necessarily have a lot of time on a, on a handgun or even a long gun or, or anything along these lines. And you can train them and you can train them in very short order to be competent with this gun. Very lightweight, easy to use. Mm -hmm. Even the, the full size AP five is a short, easy maneuver gun in a, in a, uh, you know, household environment. And you're yeah. talking about a gun with a 30 round mag, yep. mm -hmm. very easy to shoot, especially with a red dot sight on it. Mm -hmm. They need to look at, it's just not a range toy or whether they're, you know, playing like they got an MP5 in a video game, it's a gun they need to look at for a home defense gun. Truck yeah. gun. Yeah. yeah. And, and yeah. I can speak, too, that this thing runs some Federal HST hollow points like there's no tomorrow, too. Which was something, yeah. you know, uh, one of our, our sales managers, Andrew, he's pretty proficient in this as well. That's what we were so impressed with, the AP5. You know, obviously some of these roller delays, and you can speak on it more, are kind of finicky on ammo yeah, sometimes. Absolutely. And mm -hmm. the fact that the steel case that I've run through it, the hollow yeah. points that we've run through it, speaks volumes in terms of, you know, the engineering behind this platform Absolutely. of the AP5. I mean, frankly, it's eaten everything we've thrown at it. Mm. I've seen it back in the day where it was their hollow point specific. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah, back in the day. My guess is they've made changes along the line, feed ramp changes and whatnot, right. to adapt to different hollow points, especially now. you got to remember this gun was designed back in the day when full metal jacket was what everybody used. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. You know, back in the, you know, with HK designing this thing back in the day. It was full metal jacket, so the thought of running different hollow points and stuff really wasn't on the horizon at that time. But now, obviously, it is, especially if you're going to use it for home defense weapon. Yeah. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So what would be the mods, if you want to set up your gun, like you've got one now, what would be the mods that you would set up? Give us three or four or five things, because we actually did a, yeah. we did a discussion on this yesterday. What are the things from when it comes as a base pistol, like mm -hmm. you said, and that's how you wanted yours to come, what are you going to do to yours to make, make it as efficient as possible? If you can form one it and get it with the standard stock, I, you don't have to. Right. But I'm, I'm old school. I love that retractable butt stock and yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't want to form one, it, then you go with one of the braces, which are perfectly acceptable and work like a champ. Yeah. Right. So you want to do a brace. You definitely want to do a red dot sight on it, without a doubt, mm -hmm. and, a, and a good sling. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what you, you go from there. Whether you want a white light on it or not, that's a good idea, especially if you're going to use it as a home defense weapon. Yes, sir. For something clearing, you know, your home, right. what, in a basement, garage, having a white light on it. But I would say you want some kind of a brace on it to, to be able to use it. Legally, obviously, but at the same time, it enhances the, the shootability of the gun tremendously. And those are pretty simple, pretty basic. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, now the type of stock that you said, you, you want to like, you just want to go like the, with the fixed A1? Like, is that what you're talking about? Or do you want to go with something more, more collapsed? I would probably go something along this line right here. A collapsible okay. or a foldable? Yeah, yeah. A collapsible or a foldable. Yeah. And then a brace along those lines. Yeah, I, I do. If you form one it, now yeah. you can put on the, the standard HK style retractable stuff. Right. Style. Yeah. And there's a couple of companies that make some pretty cool ones like oh, that. Yeah. And there's braces that are, you know, kind of fit that in Safety Harbor, SB Tactical, yeah. J Mac Custom. I was going to say, which one was it that, uh, yeah, Safety Harbor? Is that the one that Andrew had on his? Yes. Yeah. 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 Because that one, that one's cool too. Yeah. Now, yeah. this may be out of left field, but, you know, I saw MKE makes. They do. A, a, a standard configuration retractable butt stock for like the MP5 and the HK. They do. So, I mean, obviously, MKE is a military facility. You know, they mm -hmm. make everything from tanks and missiles to small arms. Yeah. So, they have, they have what would be considered, I guess, the government LE versions of these that are completely ready. We can do that. It's are you just thinking about game. bringing any of those in as accessories or not? You no? know, I, I, the accessory maybe, I mean, I would be open to it. The, yeah. the biggest thing is, is there the market for it? Because we know, like you said, it's a, it's a, you've got to jump through some hoops to get things done. And, yeah, and, and it's expensive. And mm -hmm. they're pricey too. That's what I'm saying. And yeah, it's expensive. Yeah, it's not only expensive. to get it, but then you also got to go through the hoops and pay the, yeah, pay the money right. to SBR things. And, and it's right. just, it's another world. You might want to do a limited import on it. Maybe just buy X number of them. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, absolutely. That's the thing about this is we started this solely focused on a 9 millimeter, you know, an MP5. Yeah. And we wanted to bring in an affordable MP5, and that's what we've done the AP5. And now we knew there was a market there. We knew we had to find the sweet spot in terms of price. Sure. And now that we've legitimized that there is a market there, mm -hmm. now it's, it's game on. Yes. Game on. Oh, absolutely. Well, again, this is a timeless design. You know, yeah. I mean, it's been around for decades now. People absolutely love it. It's fun to shoot. It's, it's again, softest recoiling gun I think I've ever shot. Uh, and a lot of other 9mm pistol caliber carbines, if that's what you want to call them, that are direct blowback, things like that. They run great. 
they're fun, but they do have some recoil behind yeah, them. Yeah, they you know? do. That's yeah. a fact. Yeah. They've got some thump to them. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and so you would think you're like, oh, I'm shooting a nine mil, you know, like I shoot my Glock just fine. It's like, okay, your Glock also has a little bit of recoil to it, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, it's not exactly the, the easiest thing. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you, that roller delayed action of the MP5, I mean, man, it, it is just awesome. And uh, which brings me, Larry, this is a question that I've actually wanted to ask you for a while, like, because mm-hmm. you've got a lot of experience with a lot of different firearms. I've been following you for a long time. I've been seeing all the cool things you've shot. Hands down, your favorite gun. Oh, mm. man. Yeah. My favorite gun, yep. pistol would have to be a 1911. Just just a 1911. Yeah, is there a yeah. specific the 1911? Brand? Is there a brand? Yeah. Well, I, I, Wilson Combat makes a Vickers Elite version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they're hard to beat. I, I, big fans of Colt, Springfield Armory. I got friends yeah. that work at both places. That new yeah. Springfield Armory, the, what is it, the Prodigy, looks pretty cool. Yeah. Oh, the, pretty so cool. we've got both. we got the four and a quarter and the five inch. They do look oh, good. Oh, you do? Do you yeah. add them on I work for a competitor. Oh, and I'll, I'll have to check one when we're done. I want to check yeah. one out. Yeah, so yeah. we've shot both of them now. They're, they're, they're pretty slick. They yeah. feel good. They feel good. They feel really Even good. as a competitive company, I'm yeah. like, they did a good job with that. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, we'll, we'll shoot one out the range. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, Wilson's makes it. But not everybody can afford a Wilson. Mm, right. I mean, it's a Porsche or a you know, Mercedes level. Same premises oh, like the Staccatos. Right. Like yeah. That. It's, it's a quality. So, I mean, Wilson Combat, though. I mean, they're I mean, they're fantastic. Yeah, they are. Fantastic. Got great resale value, too. Mm-hmm. That's one of the great things about Wilson. Universally known brand. So, their resale value is excellent. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, big fan of Colt. I got buddies that work Colt, big fan of Colt, big fan of Springfield Armory. So my th- my opinion would be uh, kind of look in that direction if mm-hmm. you're looking at a 1911. If you can afford a Wilson's great. If not, look at a Colt, look at a Springfield Armory, yeah. something in those flavors. And beyond that, I as far as a favorite long gun, it would have to be an M4. Yeah. Just, it would just yeah. have to be. I've got so much time on it. I know the gun so well inside and out. It would have to be an M4 platform. Is it what's your what's your favorite variation of the no, M4? I, big fan of the 416, obviously. Yeah, <laughs> right. I, but I've been running BCM for years. Yes. And I know personal friends with the owner at BCM, mm-hmm. Paul Buffoni. So yeah. they're my go to brand. Yeah. That being said, there are tons of good AR makers out there. Oh yeah. Tons. Yeah, mm-hmm. Colt, of course, the original. Mm-hmm. There's tons of good air. Make Daniel Defense builds a good gun. Yep. BCM happens to be my top choice for a variety of reasons. But you, if you do your research, you you can find plenty of AR platforms that'll do that answer the mail for you. Yeah. Over the last decades, you've definitely seen the the variant from poorly made to very well made shrink. Oh, I think yes. you know. Yeah. Oh, I agree. I, it, it, I remember. I mean, Palmetto State Armory when I worked there, mm-hmm. 2013, almost 10 years ago. People, they were making using an FN barrel. They yeah. were doing things that other bargain manufacturers weren't. Mm-hmm. And they were still getting accused of, you know, oh, yeah. the, if it's cheap, it means it can't be good. Yeah. You know, But now you're seeing, I mean, the reality is there's still going to be some budget brands that you're not going to be. But it's shrinking significantly. Yeah. And I think because of the competition, because of the yep. level of knowledge out there, it's mm-hmm. shrinking. And I think that's where you still have the issues on the AK. Because there's, frankly, there's not 50... Yeah. Solid companies doing Bingo. it. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. well, well said. Yeah, yeah. And I think I think we're getting there though. I think over time, I think it's going to take a little longer, but I think we're slowly but surely becoming much more proficient in the design and the consistent manufacturing of an American made AK, which I think is needed mm-hmm. as obviously political issues yeah. right. make it harder and harder to obtain and, and, that, and import. That's a great one of the great illusions and uh, one of the great mis misunderstandings in the firearms industry is everybody thinks the AK is a cheap crude gun that's easy to make and that mm-hmm. nothing could be farther from the truth. Right. The gun is actually, there's a lot of sophisticated engineering in it. The, the, the Soviets put a ton of money, a ton of people in that thing to get it perfected. And it, not just anybody can make them and make a good quality gun. There's, that is a gun that has a lot more engineering and a lot more refinement in it than people expect people understand well there's a reason why you can buy build kits for ar-15s like there's no no tomorrow i mean there's these, these guns are easy to put together they're legos I mean, yeah they, they are yes. yeah tactical legos you how many people though have you known that actually built an ak from a strip receiver right you know that that gets complicated it is it gets complicated there's people can do it but nothing like people who can plug together an ar yeah nothing and there's a reason the platform's still being utilized yes. you know oh, i mean yeah. if you look obviously what's currently going on Overseas. Oh yeah. I mean, some of them are rust buckets, but they're they're still issuing. There's a case. Yeah, they're also still issuing Mosins, depending on what side you're on. So. <laughs> Could you imagine? You're in line. There's six guys in line. Yeah. Guy in front of you gets an AK. Guy in the next to you gets an AK. Guy, and then they hand you a Mosin. And you're like, yeah. um, I think there's been a mistake. So like, I know you're I, a sniper I, now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. 
something. We got a problem. <laughs> yeah, I was doing like, IT you know yesterday, and now I'm a sniper. Well, you yeah. know what? That's actually an improvement over Stalingrad. At least everybody's getting a gun. Maybe, maybe not not just one guy getting a clip of ammo, and then uh, you know, oh, and then yeah. and then here's your rifle, and that's when that guy point. drops, you know, so enemy at the gates, that stuff up, right? Yeah, no kidding. Jeez. Yeah. So you know, hey, I guess you know improvements over that. Yay, communism. But uh, <laughs> changing subject. <laughs> yeah. Before we go, I wanted to ask. So we talked about obviously what you've been going through for the last year. Yes. How are you feeling? Oh, feeling great. Feeling great. Um, it was, it was uh, follicular lymphoma. Yes, sir. In which, I hate to say it, but if you can pick a cancer to have, it's a good one to have. Because it's very treatable. Long-term prognosis is good. Um, but it's going great. I had my stem cell transplant a year ago, July. Getting, I mean, everything else is on track. So I can't complain. It couldn't really be better right now. It's in remission and, you know, Right now, knock on wood, it's under control. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's good. And I actually remember a video that I watched of you a while ago, and I thought this is a weird video. Like, why 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 would you have to address this? And I remember it was about health, and it was like, um, you know, why I'm fat. That mm-hmm, that video, mm-hmm. and I'm I'm like, what the hell? Like, why? Yeah. You know, like why? And then you know, and I saw you know I watched that video, and you said that you you sustained some injury from your service, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and um, and one comment that stood out to me that I thought was really cool of somebody to say is like, Hey, the opinions of sh- sheep don't matter to a lion, you know? Mm-hmm. And I saw that that's and I was like, funny. yeah, I was like, I was like, dude, that's, that's pretty, pretty awesome, man. And I'm, and I'm glad to see though, that you're, you know, you're, you're looking good. Uh, you're here with us today and everything. And, uh, you know, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm happy for you. Well, yeah. I, it's a cancer driven weight loss program. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it, but the good yeah. news is I've been able to sustain my weight since, mm-hmm. you know, coming off the, the cancer treatment. Right. So that's a good news. Now getting, getting out and getting back active and everything you've already talked about, you want to be at shot, uh, 2023, which we're, we're planning on being there. I'm sure we'll see you there, Adam. Yes, sir. Yeah. So we'll be excited to do that. Now, are, are you looking at hosting any more training events or anything? I'd love to, if I do any, it'll probably have to be local here to the Charlotte area. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, dealing with family stuff right now. And the wife kind of read me the right act after <laughs> cancer. Yeah. Hey, you've traveled enough for a long time. I mean, travel four lifetimes for, kind of thing. Yeah, like exactly. That, yeah. You need to slow down and focus on family. Yeah. And that, which I get, I understand that. Absolutely. That being yeah, that said though, man, it's killing me. I want to get out in the industry. Like Adam was talking about, there's nothing like in the industry. I know a million people mm-hmm. and just going and talking guns, I'm, you know, obviously incredibly passionate about it. So, I'm going to try to work it out where I'm still doing some classes, but that remains to be seen. So right, if somebody well, does see a class, yeah. if they do see you open it up, get on it because... Yeah, better yeah. sign up because there may not be many. Yeah. yeah. Well, Right yeah. now, I have none planned. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's all right. Well, just let us know. I mean, of course, we're, I think uh, we're all friends with uh, our, you know, Stoney and, you know, down at Take Aim, yep. mm-hmm. you know, so they're not too far either, you know, and uh, we've got a great relationship with them. And, you know, in Charlotte Douglas International Airport's not too far from that. On top of that, there's plenty of places to stay. So if anybody's yep. listening to this and think, oh, man, I can get a Vickers class in, it's like, hey, just saying there's some potential. Potential. Yeah. Yep. And, uh, and that. Cross and that, your fingers. Yeah. And that, no, and I think that would be awesome. And you're right though, dude, because we make friends in this industry and like, you know, we got together for uh, Clint Smith at the Thunder Ranch shoot mm-hmm. and we flew a, a winner of one of our giveaways with yeah. the Thunder Ranch Vishka out there, ran the heck out of the, how many rounds did we go through again? Uh, 6,000. 6,000. 6,000 rounds. Yeah. 6,000 rounds to so like what? Seven guns, something like yeah. that. And uh, man, I mean, it, and they worked flawlessly and uh, we were able to engage targets out to 300 yards with iron sights and everything mm-hmm. else, man. And it was a good time, but you get to see these people in the industry that you're friends with. And uh, we were just down at uh, in uh, Missouri for CMMG celebrating their 20th anniversary. And again, you just run into these people like uh, Jared with Guns and Gadgets, you know, fantastic YouTube channel, keeping us all up to date on the Second Amendment and everything. Uh, Solid so, plug. Yeah. Solid yeah, plug. Yeah, he yeah, owes yeah. you one now. Yeah, yeah. I, know, I know he does, you know. Yeah. I'm just, I just got to keep that in there, you know. Yeah. Uh, he's he's approaching 600,000, by the way. So if he hasn't already hit that, good. so you guys go, go hit him up. But, uh, but anyway... No, you're, and I, you know, we'd love to see you back out on the scene and, you know, and if teach, everything goes yeah. right, I'll be at shot. Yeah. Cross your fingers. I skipped last year because of COVID. Sure. And I was coming off my uh, stem cell transplant and mm-hmm. it just wasn't worth the risk. 
No. Yeah. And I talked to some different people in the industry, like my good friend Ashley Burns said at Blue Force Gear. Yeah. You know, we have our signature sling together. Yep. And he's like, dude, there's no way I wouldn't come within 100 miles yeah. of, of SHOT Show. Like Adam was saying, everybody comes away with the SHOT Show crud. Crud, yeah. yeah. I mean, it could be lethal in my case. Now, yeah. I'm a year down the road, almost a year down the road, so it's a totally different story now. Mm-hmm. And I, if everything goes right, cross your fingers, I'll be there. If, you, if I'm there, feel free to come up and say hi, and we'll talk guns. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And by the way, that uh, the Blue Force Gear Victor sling, the combat sling, you know, of course, that's what I'm issued in the Marines. And I, I love that sling. You did a good job on that. Thank you. Yeah, it's been a home run for us. I it, tell people on a scale one. It's been going for a while. It, yeah. it has been. Yeah. So a scale one to 10, it was a 15. Yeah. So actually, if I stars can, aligned yeah, on that. Yeah. If I can ask you, though, like, so obviously you've got just a tad bit of experience. Uh, what what led you to design that sling the way in which you did? Well, I it used a different sling for a number of years that was quick adjustable yes. for length. And I found out how usable it was. The problem is that sling needed to be updated. It, it needed a facelift. It, yeah. needed, it needed to be brought up to date. And then I ran into Ashley Burnset at a class, and I saw he had a company called Blue Force Gear that made slings. Mm-hmm. And he made a three-point sling, a single point, yep. and whatnot, and one sling that was real modular and all that. But he didn't have a good quick adjust two-point sling. And yep. he knew I was a fan of them. So we got talking, and I was super impressed with the quality. Still am. Blue Force Gear makes fantastic quality stuff. Yep. Um, so we got to talking, and he came up with the slider. I remember he sent me a prototype, and I said, oh, I don't know. I think we still need to tweak it. And then he sent me another one, which he now has framed hanging in his office. Yeah, yeah. And as soon as I got it, I opened up the box, and I called him, and I said, this is it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I knew right then. And it was like the Post-it note is what I tell people. There's no way to improve the post-it note because it, it is what it is. It's yeah. everything it needs to be and nothing it doesn't. And that's the same thing with the sling. Yeah. It's everything it needs to be and nothing it doesn't. And it's basically stayed the same. You know, we and the initially it had machined aluminum hardware, which mm-hmm. now they live they offer as a limited option on occasions with special runs. Yes, normal hardware now is molded plastic. Yep, um, and it's available solid. in a variety. Yeah, yeah very solid. Yeah, um, available in a variety of colors, padded, non padded. Yep, they have several different flavors of them. They have a thin one now if you want something real light, say for one of these AP five yeah. variants. So, real happy with that setup. Yeah, real happy. No, yeah, like like I said, I've. <laughs> it's funny, and also I'm in the Marine Reserves, and I, and we just got done shooting our rifle qualification in August, and it's like you know a couple of these guys are getting your sling and on, you know obviously I shoot for a living and run the sling, run multiple different slings, run different types of firearms, and uh, these guys are getting it, and it's like I don't understand why it adjusts and all that, and I'm like, go from the standing to the prone really quick, and you're trying to get a shot off accurately at 500 yards and you'll understand why it adjusts you also understand it'll adjust too so that way you can get maybe hands on and you don't have to worry about your rifle just going all over the freaking place how about that guys come on now use Mm -hmm. your head right and uh so you know finally we're using we're utilizing what's called the um uh, annual rifle qualification the new that's what the marines are shooting on now and i think it's actually a much more practical and i like it i like it a lot it's a little bit more challenging in a sense and i think it's again a lot more practical and your sling definitely came into use there. I mm-hmm. use the heck out of that, manipulating that, and making sure my guys are also sized up right. Yes, you know? and, that's critical. And you can, yeah. all, if you set it up right, you can use it as a cinch sling too. Yep. Oh, which yeah. I think you guys they teach you guys that, don't they? So they they teach us with like an old two point parade sling. You know, at least at least when when I went through, still in sixteens, a fours, of course. And I went through without an ACOG. I did shoot on iron sights. Just want to throw that out there. And. Uh, but no, they, I, it was just, so yeah, you did the, uh, what, I forgot what they call it now, the cinch loop though, whatever you pop it off, you tighten that on mm-hmm. your arm, you know, you're standing there and you've got a real tight grip. And if you, if you do it incorrectly, you start to lose, you know, feeling in your arm. It's yeah. a good time. Your hand goes yeah. numb. You're yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. It's like, why can't I hit the target? It's yeah. like, well, you, your front, your front side's doing that. So you're dancing you know. around. <laughs> right. But, uh, but anyway, but no, I'm a big fan of the sling. And uh, are there any other projects you're working on right now? You're just books. To, yeah, we books, got an HK yeah. book coming out in the Vickers oh, Guide cool. series. James Williamson, good friend of ours, right. helped with it. So that's going to be out. Should be they're shipping right now. They're, they're shipping from overseas right now, I should say. And they should be out. I want to say early November they'll be shipping. How awesome. many books have you come out with now? Yeah, that's a good question. I think now we're at nine or ten. That's impressive. Yeah. I would have to think through the number, but you know, some of them have been reprints, but then others have been like our 1911 book. We greatly expanded it and made it two volumes. Right. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, I know yeah. a couple of them are volume one and volume, volume two. Volume two, yeah. The 1911 one came out and it's greatly expanded and we busted it into two volumes. That's a good example of one. I think 
nine or ten. I think the HK one might be pushing us to ten. Wow. Yeah. Been doing real well. That that's a killer book. It's handguns. Yeah. Okay. Hand yeah, guns, it's yeah. handguns. We're planning two more uh, to cover long guns and then also machine guns and special purpose weapons. Oh We're planning yeah. Two more volumes. That'd be cool. Actually, you know what? I want to get your your opinion on this uh, because obviously SIG right now is is dominating military contracts. Yes. Right. Uh, how do you feel about you know uh, the NGSW program? Uh, they've got the six point eight cartridge. They this battle rifle that they've come out. They got the Spear LT now that they just recently announced. What What are your thoughts about all that and the possibility of the Spear LT actually replacing, replacing. the they, M4? Yeah. Man, until I see it. Yeah, I tell people I when I I mean that gun has been around for so long it's mm-hmm. so refined. Yep. Now I mean uh, the ergonomics are superb. They're the gold standard for ergonomics. I don't know until I see the M4 honest to God replaced, I'll believe it when I see it. Right, and that's that's pretty much how I feel too because I'm I'm thinking too just uh, financial. I mean. Spear LTs aren't going to be cheap. No. You know, uh, but at the same time, I mean, you helped develop the HK416, mm-hmm. which utilizes a short stroke piston driven system. Mm-hmm. Um, and so does the Spear LT, uh, or just the Spear in, in general. It's based all off of the uh, Sig MCX that we all you know, know, like, and all that type which of stuff. Which is based yeah. off the AR18. Yes. Yeah. It all comes down to Stoner. Stoner mm-hmm. did it right multiple times, you know, and I, yeah. I, <laughs> I just always think that's kind of funny. I've, we have, I think we've all seen that meme, you know, it's like, uh, you know, Eugene Stoner was responsible for all this, always has been type of thing, you yeah. know, and oh yeah, that, that includes DI guns or, you know, uh, I, people like to argue all the time. Is the AR-15 a DI gun or is it a, you know, uh, what, what do they call it? A gas gun of a... Uh, I call it DI. Yeah. But you know, it has a piston. The bolt is a piston. That's right. The bolt yeah. does act as a piston. Yeah. I yeah. call, I still call it a DI gun just yeah. to delineate it from a conventional piston, piston gun yep. where the piston is, ex, you know, external. Mm-hmm. It's, it's not inside the bolt carrier. That's so right. to speak. So but the I premise still is still D. the same. That yeah, it it's, yeah, it's a piston gun. A lot of people yeah. didn't know that. But when you hear it, you're all, oh, it makes sense. It's got gas rings. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's a piston driven gun, but it, I still call it a DI gun. Yeah. Direct and yeah, it's, I think it's funny because if people nitpick and argue, oh my God, all the time. Down people in, in our industry arguing about yeah. guns? Yeah. yeah that's <laughs> Just don't believe it. Oh, right. Yeah. How, how about that? Oh my goodness. But yeah, but no, I mean, uh, the 6.8, I think is a pretty neat thing. Uh, I, have you had any experience or seen anything about it? Or We went up to take pictures at SIG. We, yeah. we brought out SIG Volume 1, which was basically a handgun book with a little bit of subgun stuff in it. Yep. Um, and we took pictures of the long guns and I was able to handle it. That was not able to shoot it. Yeah. And this is some of the earlier prototype stuff. Yeah. We're hoping to get back up there and get some more pictures of the stuff that's more finalized now. Mm-hmm. Stuff that, you know, that's a little bit farther down the food chain. Yeah. Um, but, but I got to handle it, did not get to shoot it. We were yeah. up there a couple of weeks ago for the uh, ADSS, which is a Adaptive Defensive Shooting Symposium for mm-hmm. for individuals that have physical disabilities. Cool. And SIG, yeah. the SIG Academy was kind enough to put it on at their facility. And that's neat. And Canic sponsors it. And uh, Sam, who's the marketing director over at uh, SIG, yeah. gave me a tour of the new SIG experience facility. How's that includes that? even their museum with all you know the iterations they've mm-hmm. had in the military and competitions. It's impressive. Yeah. I mean, it is. You you can tell they've uh, put some of their their government funds to good oh, use yeah, to right. make sure their facility is very nice. But I can't be mad at them. But it was. No. It is beyond impressive. I think I think we need to take like a field trip. I'm just saying, go up there, you know, get, yeah. get, a, get a couple guys out there, see what that SIG experience is all about, because I think that'd be, I think that'd be yeah. pretty fun, you know. Um, uh, but, yeah, cool. Now, how about your thoughts on M17, M18 replacing the M9? I know you've got some experience with the M9 for sure. Well, it was it a was matter of time. Yeah. It was a matter of time. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the couple of different things. A little bit slimmer gun yep. than the M9. A lot of people, if you deal with different people, one of the factors that come into play is how big the – the grip is yeah the yeah, circumference and then double action versus single action mm-hmm. so it was just a matter of time before a polymer frame striker fired pistol was the new service handgun i mean right. there's just no way around it yeah and uh so from my understanding is it was a dod requirement to be modular right uh, I mean, did, did Glock just like say, hey, here's a Glock, that's all you need? Because it didn't seem like they did anything that was going to offer any type of modularity. They made it brown. <laughs> yeah, they did make it brown. They made it brown. Oh. That's a big deal in Glock. Yeah. And it, it has an ambi uh, slider lace. Yeah. Right? So, right. Yeah. So, I mean, 
You know, the only thing I can think of on that is kind of what they did for, I think, is a DHS where they did the Glock 48 and all that kind of stuff. And you can do a, a plug and play, a mix and match. I think you can mm. match slides. Right. You know what I mean? That's a little more the only, modular, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's the only thing I'm thinking. But, you know, that came out as best I know after the Glock submission to the military. So yeah. I, I'm with you. I don't know that the modularity piece, I think they just kind of looked at it. Hey, we... You have the ability to swap out back straps. That's what we're going to call modularity. Oh, well. Well, I mean, that, that bid started, what, like six, seven years ago? Quite a, a while, while ago. Maybe yeah. even longer than that, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. Because, I mean, that, it's been in place now for, what, three years? Uh, something like that, yeah. Three, four? I mm-hmm. mean, so you think about this was, that. I mean, those RFQs, those are, yeah. that's, not a long, that's not a short process. Those are years oh, and yeah. years to get it in. So Big time. Yeah. So, I mean, if, if that's the case, then that's the conversation you're having, which is also impressive. you got to give props to SIG on having that ready f- five, six years ago. Oh, yeah. They jumped through hoops. I knew they, they burnt the midnight oil to get that gun ready for submission. Right. Priced very aggressively, mm-hmm. big time, mm-hmm. to the military. So, yeah, I mean, SIG's on their A game yeah. for sure. They're yeah. the ones that everybody's chasing. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no kidding. Now, with that, though, I, I – kind of want to talk a little bit about some other pistols because a huge mover that we have right now um is canic mm-hmm. and dude you guys all right so you and i have talked mm-hmm. i don't know what you're at liberty to talk about but you have some cool canic things coming up absolutely so first of all out of the box performance for a pistol at the price point that that is at is some of the hardest to beat i mean First of all, the trigger is phenomenal. The accuracy, it runs great. Recoil, the looks, the design and ergonomics. The guns run, dude. And, right. I mean, we have shot the ever-living crap out of some of these guns. And, Larry, do you have experience with the mm-hmm. Canic line and, mm-hmm. and everything? I mean, I haven't had any issues with it. I mean, uh, Katie at the range, of what you're, it's the uh, rival that you're... Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you shoot the heck out of that thing. Oh, I shoot all the time. Yeah, I mean, it's just, I, I, we should get you a holster. Yeah, <laughs> man, it's almost like I asked for that a long time ago. She wanted a drop leg holster. We have them overseas for our military contracts, mm-hmm. and uh, we got her one. It's sitting on my desk. Oh, I forgot. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's, <laughs> you know, you got an excuse because you don't get back to your desk that. That is fair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't even know I still had a desk. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, yeah. Canic is Canic has been something that has been such a wonderful experience to be a part of. Uh, yeah. To be frank, it was a huge part of the reason why I was so excited to come work for Century and Canic. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said, the the numbers have grown exponentially. I mean, 10x since I started. Yeah. Um, we have definitely become a major force in the handgun community in the United mm-hmm. States. And I think a lot of that is attributed to exactly what you just said. Um, you know, there are... Obviously, I have no qualms. I'm a gun guy. Yeah. I have no qualms talking about the, the right. fantastic options of other guns. I mean, I've given props to Wilson and you know Springfield, Staccato. Yeah. I mean, Sig. We're talking about all of them. But I think one of the things that sets Canic apart is, like you said, there are a lot of great guns out there, but you you pay for what you get a lot oh, of times, yeah. you know. Yeah. And the fact that you are able to get what you get at such an aggressive price point. For instance, the rival is six seventy nine, mm-hmm. and yeah. you're getting you're getting a competition grade pistol um, with right a, out of the box with yeah. a I mean oh, yeah. essentially a three hundred dollar aftermarket trigger yeah. with mm-hmm. a ninety degree aluminum brake trigger. Um, you know, mag wells, competition holster, extra mags, aluminum base plates, all these yeah. things that are twenty dollars here, fifty dollars there, two hundred dollars there. You know. For six seventy nine MSRP, so you're even seeing them out there at six twenty nine, right. five ninety nine, um, is something that really speaks volumes. And and it put against every other gun that came out in twenty twenty one or twenty twenty two, it just won Industry Choice Awards twenty twenty two Gun of the Year. Oh, nice! I didn't and know I've got some yeah. uh, pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I can't say what because you know they'd kill me, but it actually just won two more awards as well for Guns okay. of the Year for nice. some other some other individuals uh, some governing bodies that are pretty sure. excited about it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then with that, we said, you know, we know we need to continue to come out and push the envelope. So we've got uh, a couple more guns that are going to be coming out within the next six months. Um, one that'll be out before the end of the year. Okay. That's going to be, uh, you know, I, I, let's just put, we're say, you know, we're, we're putting uh, the fire, the metal to the fire kind of thing. Okay. You know, okay. you, know, you see metal, what I'm saying? Metal to the, the fire. Metal to the fire on you that know what? Kind just, of thing. just hand it to Larry real quick so he can throw it on his Instagram. It, and exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Touche. <laughs> Touche. And then we got another one that's going to be very exciting uh, that's coming out at SHOT Show. Um, but, you know, we're keeping that one our pretty little secret. Yeah, so, okay. Uh, okay. you know, so, you know, a couple, a couple hints there. But what we're most excited about is the fact that people have truly embraced the Canic uh, as, as a acceptable, you know, Pistol not only for, like you said, the fun times at the range, but it's something they can yeah. depend their life on if they absolutely needed to. Um, I carry a Canic, and I think even bigger testament than me carrying a Canic is this is something I can say, is my mom carries a Canic. Oh, yeah. And mm -hmm. I got my mom a Canic. And that was something, you know, of course, I'm a company man. I, I, if I'm out there walking around with a Glock, it kind of doesn't look the greatest. Sure, right, yeah. yeah. But, but, and I'm okay saying that. And we, yeah. you know, we can all say that, you know. Right. But when I bought my mom one and gave it to my mom, I think that speaks volumes of oh, yeah. You know, yeah. I, I, there's no there's no pride there. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, I want my mom to point it and go boom. You yeah. know, uh, yeah, and I want my significant other, I want my best friend or whatever it is. Hey, you know what? I at the end of the day, you can hand me just about anything. I'll make it work, yeah. right? But I want the people that I care about to have to the be best, the best, yeah. right? Um, uh, for what they can afford or whatever else it might be. And no, you're absolutely right. You know, that speaks volumes. And you know, Canic, the trigger is the biggest thing I think that's so impressive about it's it. You know, fantastic. the pull, the reset. Yeah. People People pull, and that's what we're doing. We're doing right now. We're committed to being out on the road as much as possible and letting people pull the trigger. On. It's like the Coke to Pepsi test. Yeah. You know, taste it, try right, it, right. pull the trigger on it, dry fire it at your local gun store. Yeah. You know, feel the trigger on it, and then tell me it's not worth what it is, and it's not mm -hmm. something that is truly a different level. And I mean, even the barrel. We have a lifetime or a fifty thousand round warranty wow. on the barrel alone. What handgun says that? 50,000 yeah. round warranty on the barrel. It's That's just incredible. Yeah, yeah, so, I mean, now if something blows up in the barrel, we're going to have to have a conversation yeah, with you. Sure, but, yeah. but, I mean, if you're <laughs> right. just a normal wear and tear, 50,000 rounds. Yeah. And let's be honest, we're not out there counting it. So if you call us and say, hey, this yeah. barrel's starting to wear down, we're going to we're gonna yeah. take care of you. Right. Um, but, yeah, so it's been, a, it's been a great opportunity to be involved in it. It's been a great opportunity to continue to grow. And now the biggest thing is we have officially broken out. It's being built. We're building a Canic facility to manufacture our guns in the U.S. Wow. In, West, oh, in West Palm nice. Beach, Florida right now. Oh, so not, not only that. is that going to be, you know, more uh, controlling our own destiny in the yeah. United States, but it's, you know, 100 plus jobs for, you yeah. know, 2A supporting Americans. And we're excited about that. And, and it truly being something that we can embrace not only as a quality pistol, but an American made quality pistol. That's cool. So Larry, are you down to take a, take a road trip and go tour the facility when it's uh, up? I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. come on. Yeah. Uh, it's, sunny. It's, it's sunny South Florida. I know that's going to be a oh, tough. It's terrible. Maybe, maybe yeah. you can bring the wife and she won't be quite as hard on you about, about yeah. getting out of the road. Yeah. yeah. So. We'll turn it into a vacation. You know? There you go. So, so if you can turn your work trips into vacations, that's where it's at. It's always a win. Yeah. Ken Hackathorn had a great line about the Canic. He got one and was shooting it and letting people shoot it. And he said, you know, at the aggressive price point, this gun is the gold standard. Wow. Wow. That's so, cool. I mean, it's coming, coming from him, too. That's, when you're talking yeah. about aggressive price point, yeah. it's a gold yeah. standard. And we all understand, you know, that the market has to uh, um, accommodate everybody with every mm -hmm. budget. Yeah. Not yeah. everybody can afford a you know a four thousand dollar Wilson Combat, and you have to accommodate the entire market, but still give them a quality product that they can depend on. Well, I mean, is is the gun that really defines that? Yeah, and I mean, and, and you guys are doing a good job with that because yeah. because not everybody can can afford an, an HK, but you get something that's literally make made on pretty much the same stuff. Yeah, and it runs. Yeah, it runs. Oh my God, you know the AP five does does. The magic stuff and you mentioned something earlier too i think i want to kind of just put out there and just let people know you're talking about bringing jobs to the market mm -hmm. you know um i think what you know of course there's a lot of politics happening right now even around these things called braces and stuff like that you know and i'm glad to see that you guys aren't shying away from that you're like guess what they're still here so we're gonna we're gonna if you want a gun if you want an ap5 with a brace we're gonna have that option Absolutely. for you so i think first of all like that's awesome uh thanks for uh, thank you for supporting america and uh the second amendment but also you know, I, I think what a lot of politicians and a lot of people don't understand is how big this industry is. Hmm. Some towns are their whole livelihood is based off of the manufacturing that they have there. Mm -hmm. You yeah. know, we were just in, like I said, yep. in Missouri with CMMG in Boonville, Missouri. That's what they're known for is CMMG. The, and during uh, COVID and during all the shutdowns and everything, they supported 10 other businesses and, and they did all sorts of neat things because obviously the gun market did fine. And they went out and supported all of these local businesses. And the uh, was it the governor there that said every business is an essential business uh, and said nobody's shutting down. 
right? Wow, I didn't and, know that. Yeah, and I thought, dude, that's that's pretty cool. And a lot of that, and they're friends with CMMG type of stuff, you know? And I'm just thinking, dude, the gun industry, like we, we've we partnered with uh, Fort Scott Munitions out of uh, Fort Scott. Mm -hmm. And again, the whole town knows that they have a training facility up there, that knows that they make ammunition, knows mm -hmm. that they bring in all sorts of special operations and law enforcement to train up there, and they're all in on it, well, you know? Oh, yeah, we went, out in the, <clears throat> we went out in the dark in a neighborhood. And oh, they're yeah. like, oh, it's totally fine. We already called all the neighbors. They know what's going on. Yeah, the local local, yeah. Law, local law enforcement knows what's up. Yep. Uh, and they typically do uh, trainings there for special operations and say, hey, if you get caught, you have you have to get from point A to point B and, and your objective is this, right? Mm -hmm. If a dog barks at you as you're going through somebody's backyard and they call the police, they're going to be like, okay, cool. So-and-so has been selected that you fail. Yeah. Like the whole community is in on it. Yeah. That's it's like, amazing. That's yep. freaking that is cool. Cool. We have, you know, our, our manufacturing and logistics facility for Century Arms is based on a right outside of Burlington, Vermont. Yeah. Um, and speak candidly, Burlington is a very liberal community. Yeah. Um, but you get right outside the city mm -hmm. and you see a very different political viewpoint on a, on a majority of the individuals. Mm -hmm. And that facility has been there for decades now. And, you know, we employ 200 individuals just at that facility alone. Um, and they handle everything from building our American-made AKs to importing AP-5s to ensuring that all the canics that come in from Turkey right now make it all across the country. Um, Larry, you've actually been there. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it's one of those communities that, like you said, when COVID hit, we applied and we were ruled, deemed an essential business. And we're able to keep the lights on at nine other companies just in Vermont and That's New York awesome. alone yeah. that were, that were, you know, utilize, we utilized in support of our yeah. infrastructure. And I mean, it's a tough community up there. I mean, it yeah. really is. It's a tough people with grit, people with passion, and we're so honored to be a part of it. And even with the flack that a lot of people, mm -hmm. you know, they don't like that as a gun manufacturer there in, in the, like the more liberal parts of town, right? They still can't argue the fact that we're putting food on people's table yeah. right? and, and that the people are passionate. And it's, it's that's a tough community in the, in the winter. Larry, I remember oh, we man. were there and we were sitting at breakfast and it Larry said, mm -hmm. and it was cold. Yeah. And Larry said, you know, the last time I was here though, I hated it. I said, he said, I hate Vermont. And you were at was Mount Helen? What Mount was Washington. Mount right? Washington, yeah. yeah. Mount Washington. He, was at, he said, they, uh, tell the story. We what got it? out of the tent, me and a friend of mine. They were on training, was, Delta yeah, Force Delta training. Delta Force yeah. training, and uh, it was 50 below. We didn't know it at oh. the time. Mm. And he had any exposed skin, it felt like it was being burned yeah. oh. because of the cold. Mm. And uh, we found out later when we got down off the mountain, it was 50 below. <laughs> and it was extremely cold. Mm. Didn't you say your guns were, like, locking up oh, and yeah. stuff like that? Oh, yeah. You, um... You had to make sure that you had every single component, every single spring, everything lubed. Everything had to have a lube that would work in cold. Right. Because if you Jeez. didn't... It'd just gum up or freeze. It would be frozen. Yeah. Lord so, help you if it rained or anything like oh, that, or you were sweating on it. Oh, yeah, you're done. And then, yeah. and then it, it froze That's, overnight, because whatever you had, I mean, if the, the selector was on safe or whatever, then you weren't moving it. It was frozen. It was a real wake-up call. It's also geez. why you don't see a lot of combat in extreme winter conditions. Nobody yeah. wants to fight in that. No. no. Mm -hmm. You're just throwing things at each other at that yeah, point. Right. If you can even move your arm you're that just, much, you can you're just, move your you're arm. just at that point you're just throwing insults, you know. That's right. <laughs> hey, screw you, dude. <laughs> yeah, my tent's warmer than your tent. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, we were sitting. I'll never forget that he said oh, we're sitting at breakfast. He's like, God, I hate this state. And I was like, Oh, what did right. it do? He's like, yeah. Oh no, no, I just always think about that time yeah, on the, Mount on the mountain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, but yeah, it's it's cold. it is it is something that we take a lot of pride in and working with individuals like Larry and you know a lot, Clint, these yeah. guys that are. You know, they were hardened through fires of war and oh, fires yeah. of, of, you know, having a passion for the freedom of this country has helped us create. We actually have Century Salutes now, which is an organization that we created that uh, goes out and finds charitable organizations uh, that are giving back to the veteran community. Um, oh, cool. And we do uh, quarterly and, and uh, biannually. Uh, partnerships with them to then be able to donate. We just did one with a company called, or an organization called Josh's House. Okay. And it was, uh, it's a house that they're building across the country. They're starting in Vermont um, that is open 24-7, 365. And it's everything from a gym to a kitchen to video games to pool to a computer room. And it's veterans can come in. And it's basically, without sounding cheesy, a safe space where they can come in, they can talk shit. They can say whatever they want. Mm. They, you know, all different branches. Of, and they basically have that sense of camaraderie that they lose once they get out of the military. Mm. That's, you know? that's big. And, and, it, and it, is, it was all stemmed from uh, 
a gentleman named Josh Pilata. His mother started it after he uh, just took his life yeah. struggling from PTSD. Um, and he actually had worked at Century Arms for a little while too. Wow. And so we started it, and we were we did an AK, a veteran AK that uh, that I, you, Classic actually carried some of it, and it had yeah. the veteran insignia. Yep. And we donated a portion of all of the um, everyone sold. We donated twenty thousand dollars to them to help them just to have funds to. Uh, and they do everything from acupuncture in there to massage right. to anything that they can do that they think will help uh, heal the internal yeah. pains of, or at least ease them. Right. Um, is something, and it's and it's been a really cool opportunity. We're about to uh, team with uh, Battle Buddy, the three gun. Oh yeah, no, we're yeah, gonna be dude, working oh, with them. Man, I feel so bad. I gotta get back. Yeah, we're gonna Frankie do some stuff. There. Frankie, gotta, yeah, we're gonna do some him. stuff yeah. with them. Yeah. Um, that's gonna be the next one we're gonna do. Um, well, let us let us know, dude. We'll partner up, man. Yeah, we'll partner up on stuff like that because, first of all, that's something that I'm that I'm huge on, right? Yeah, you know, I, know I mean, the right. the mental health of our veterans and everything else like that. That's something that you know, unfortunately, gets kind of looked over sometimes because yeah. uh, a lot of people say like, oh, "You don't have any physical scars, you're fine," and that's that's not the case. And I, know, know, I, I know too many guys that didn't have physical scars that aren't here now. There's a, there's amazing individuals that you. Know, I mean, we just you know, Neil. Uh, uh, that yeah. was, you know, know. Neil, Neil's he, owner of Ready Gunny, Redder yeah. Gunny, Ready Gunner. There, there we go. go. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, it was an amazing human being, amazing wife, beautiful mm-hmm. children, yeah. uh, had a great business. Um, we worked with him a lot on some stuff, and, you know, he lost his struggle yeah. and his stuff. And there's been a lot of, of individuals that have, you know, gone down recently. And, I mean, we've mm-hmm. even lost people to ailments. That's what I'm going to say. You know, right. love him or hate him. I loved him. I mean, oh, Jaeger, dude, Jaeger, yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, it was. It was really tough to see Did see I, him go, but I mean, he went on on his terms, and, oh, I, yeah. and I think that's the biggest thing is that's one thing the gun community tries to do is we try to honor those that are no longer yeah. with us and the yeah. honor of those. Agreed. And you know, I'm just so proud to be able to sit here with you. I mean, I was worried about you, brother. I really oh, yeah. was, Larry. I was worried about you, and and you know, I know the fight's not done yet, but to say, I love to see that the warrior mentality that you took to your entire mm-hmm. career, both in the service and then out of it, the way you help, have always held your students to that no nonsense that you backed up by truly approaching this that way, and watching you just walk around the warehouse today like it was, I mean, other than you know, just life beating you up and. Mount, Mount Washington. Yeah, you're still moving around as spry as ever, bro. And, and getting, getting excited things. about a, a gun here or there, you know. I know, yeah. I know, I know. You've seen a lot, but it, it's always pretty cool whenever you pick up something. He's drooling like, over a Mosin, yeah, 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 or something like that, yeah. you know. Um, uh, so that that is that is super cool. But but anyway, I think uh, I think we've hit a lot of cool topics today. Um, Adam, it's always a pleasure, man. Love, Honestly, love getting you in here. And uh, it's always good seeing you at the different shows, hanging out, going out, you yeah. know, getting together, doing stupid stuff, doing hood rat stuff with my friends. Watching you run away from me. Uh, at, oh, yeah. Doing shot. interviews. Yeah, You're welcome. Is, You're welcome. Yeah. Well, I mean, one, keep up, little legs. Yeah, yeah. I know. One, one step of his is like 20 a year. I mean, you know yeah, how yeah. many people afterward were like, I can't believe you were such a jerk and did that. I was like, no, no, no. It was oh, planned. Sh- Calm down. It's okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's, well, before that's we leave, funny. I got to ask you some questions now. So, in, people case, in case people are watching, it, all, the whole AP5 series, do you mm. guys, does Classic carry those? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. We're gonna have all them three, all, all three different flavors. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and, and different sets up of it as well. Yeah. So yeah. optics, optics ones, braced ones, yeah. uh, all kinds yeah. of things. That was one of the reasons we were so excited to have you in here to give the validity to the product, mm-hmm. other than just us carrying it to make sure. Money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then also the Canic stuff, you guys go. Oh carry yeah, Canic oh, is. Yeah. I think Canic is our number one seller of pistol. Yeah. I think. Um, uh, and and correct me if I'm wrong. As far as importation goes, y'all are bringing in more than a lot. We're bringing a in a lot, lot. Yeah. a whole lot of guns. Yeah, it's, yeah, and it's it, like I said, it, it's growing. We have been fortunate enough to move up the ranks in yeah. terms of the number and, and where we are. We're playing with the big boys now, and yeah. it's been a blessing. That's yeah. freaking cool. I man. just want to let you know that I ca- so every time we go out to the range, I carry the canic on my hip. Right. You would be yeah. surprised how many people from like other manufacturers, like these big expensive manufacturers, like what do you, what do you what do you have? I was like it's a canic rival, and I handed it to them. They're like, you're gonna let me shoot it? I was like, yeah, shoot it. Yeah, Try I'm gonna let you shoot it. And they're like, oh my god. Yeah, like this is solid. like they'll yeah. look around and they're like, make sure nobody's filming, and I'll shoot it. And I'm like, you got another mag? Yeah. <laughs> I just go through like three mags and then like, that's like, a canic. Like, I'm like, yes. A, do, you have, do you have another one of those in the uh, in the warehouse? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, wait, wait, what's, what's y'all's price point? Industry on discount on <laughs> it? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes, exactly, yeah. yeah. Dude, it happens all the time, man. Mm-hmm. It, it really does, you know, and it's a, it's a great pistol. Uh, the, I mean, the Rival, you got the TP9 series, of course, the SFX. Um, heck, you know, we've had uh, employees carry the SC, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. So, I mean, they're just great guns. Larry, what is your YouTube channel? Uh, Vickers Tactical. Victor, Vickers Tactical. That's so same, as, make sure. same as your Instagram, correct? Yep, same yep. as my Instagram. Yeah, I know his Instagram well. Yeah. Hey, you know what? My, <laughs> my Facebook uh, got shut down. 
I was oh, going to say. Yeah. Hey, been there. Did you guys get shut down? So too? we had a group. We had but mine just got yeah. frozen. It didn't, they didn't, it's still there, but it yeah. got frozen and I can't update to it anymore. Yeah. Yeah. That's a Same passive aggressive you. shutdown, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Bingo. Yeah. Yeah. Bingo. I knew that's what it was. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we had the Jeez. Classic Firearms Buyers Group, which is which was actually a, a private group that got uh, a little rowdy in there. Oh. And it was at, at one point, I think we had over twenty thousand, you know, group members, and they you had to be a customer uh, of Classic Firearms, and you had like, and it was like I said, it was a private group. And you had a couple of questions you had to answer before you could get in there, and uh, man, uh, we kind of let let it just kind of play off on its own. We didn't do a whole lot of heavy moderating mm -hmm. and we, have. we, we definitely should have, maybe the group would still be around. I don't know, but uh, let's just say it got rowdy and was shut down. And it was like, we woke up one night or one morning and it was just like, yep, the buyer's group's gone. And we all kind of looked at each other. Like that makes sense. <laughs> yeah. I, um, mine's still there. So if yeah. you look it up, you'll find it, but it has not been updated in months. I yeah. try to update it. I've tried many times. I've reached out to, um, I've reached out to Facebook to get some help and it, yeah. nothing. So it's basically in limbo. I don't know if I'll ever be able to get it up to run again. Now, fortunately, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong. I think Facebook's day is kind of over. It's, it's definitely a changing medium. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I think that's why Instagram's where it's Instagram's at. going and Instagram. You're seeing what they're doing right now is, and, and, you know, all of us here, including you, Larry, we are, we are walking a very fine line oh, yeah, with social to. media. Oh, yeah. You know, people always ask, why didn't you say the price? Why didn't you, you guys know we why we didn't say the price. Yeah. I mean, even on YouTube, we don't talk about, you, mm -hmm. you cannot perpetuate the sale of a gun. Yeah. And, or it, whether we want to or whether we agree with it or not, the rules are clear. And if we want to still be able to get this information out, out to the there. public, mm -hmm. we have to play by those rules, yeah. whether we like it or not. Yeah. Um, now, granted, there are other, you know, platforms that we could go to. I mean, other people are talking about, like, uh, Rumble and, and some other things, and uh, yeah. what there's, like, Truth Social or something like that. But the, but the, the but lion's share of people are still yeah, on it's, the it's still on YouTube. They're you still know? on YouTube. They're yeah. still on Instagram. Yeah. And so uh, the biggest thing you could do is always just understand that with, if Century Arms is working with somebody and Classic Firearms is who we're talking to, mm -hmm. there's always avenues. You know where to go yep. if you need to find out more information. You yeah. know yeah. what I mean? And, and Larry, same with you guys. Uh, that's where it is. It's, it's that simple. While it's a pain in the butt and we're all, you know, we don't want to spend 30 more seconds than we have mm -hmm. to. The reality is we all have to play by those rules so that we can still get you the information as easy as possible. Yeah, that's right. right. That's right. Yeah. And uh, even Larry, you were saying that you noticed even like uh, in some of your growth, you noticed that it was getting pretty heavily. Oh, throttled. absolutely. Yeah. I mean, my Instagram too has been at 182,000 now for, I mean, months. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it hadn't grown at all. Yeah. Mm. So it's been there for months. Century right. and Canic have seen, we've seen, we were averaging, you know, 50 to 60 followers added a day. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it was three. Oh, wow. oh, they have those little shadow bands. Well, that's the way with Gun Owners of America. I couldn't find their page. I was literally looking for something. I finally added them to my favorites yeah. because they had them so shadow banned that yeah. even though I followed them, I couldn't see any Which of is their ironic because Gun Owners of America isn't selling actual guns. No, no but, but, they're, but it's they're the information they put out. The truth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and the information, they're, they're a, uh, a pro-gun, pro to a advocacy group. Yeah. So, of course, it's crazy, you know, yeah, yeah, so. So of course they're going to get you know a little bit of hate. Uh, but yeah, I try to tag them on different Instagram stories and stuff, and it says, "Hey, they've posted up, you know, uh, you know, uh, false information before, fake news, and, or something like that." You know, it's like, "Are you sure you want to tag them?" I'm like, "Get the heck out!" Yes, of course I am. You know, mm -hmm. but but anyway, so but yeah, Vickers Tactical Instagram and YouTube mm -hmm. and uh, and Facebook, and of course, and then, uh, Vickers Guide. Vicar's Guide, yes. Yeah, Vicar's Guide for the books. Yep, yep. that's right. Yep, I'm, I'm actually pretty certain we've got a couple laying around. Uh, but uh, And then, of course, Canic, Century Arms. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep, so CanicUSA.com, CenturyArms.com, and then uh, CanicUSA as our social medias, yep. and then Century Arms. Yeah. Yep. And you guys are over like uh, Red Army Standard. We have Red uh, Army Standard, US, US Palm. Palm. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, speaking of US Palm, Andrew's, Andrew's throwing us, uh, no, give us a bag. Yeah, I was hoping <laughs> you would bring <laughs> it to me. Larry, you'll appreciate this. So oh, we want to yeah, do some little fun. I don't know oh, how tactical okay. it is, but yeah. So. Oh, man. No, these are perfect for uh, whenever you're out there, you know, running your running your drills and everything. You're doing those quick mag changes and some high grass or something. You need something that you can actually find. That's your, a good point. Dude, look, at, look at you legitimizing look at a bright green magazine. Dude, I, I mean, first of all, that's I have done that. Right, uh, orange. Oh yeah, and it comes with. Uh, we haven't thought of a name for him just yet, but it comes with this little patch too. These are the alien green exclusively sold through Classic. Uh, this is a pretty fun design, dude. So we partnered up with US Palm on this, and you guys sent us a couple of samples in, and we were like, dude, this is this is it. This yeah, is it's it, been exciting. You know? 
Yeah, and people are already asking because we did uh, the AR one with Lancer. Uh, we've done this is also our first run of the AK, and people are now like, "So you're gonna do a Glock mag?" Glock I saw mag. that. Yeah, I saw so that. you know, you know, else we could do. You know, what I mean, we could do an MP5 mag, an AP5 Ooh. mag. Just, hey, let me throw something, something out, a yeah. little safety thing that I'm a big fan of: high visibility followers. Right, mm-hmm. I'm a big fan mm-hmm. of them. I don't know if you guys. Black, it has a black, has a black, black one. Yes, sir. Yeah. Um, I'm a fan of the bright orange, the bright. You know, the bright red, the bright yellow, whatever. So when you see the mag on a table or you see it on the ground and you see that high visibility, you can tell the mag's empty. Right. Yeah. Big fan of Especially that. Especially so, in the in the heat of thing or whatever. Right, just, on yeah. the range. Yeah. No question. And you yeah. can just tell at a glance, hey, the mag's empty. Mm-hmm. Um, I've had other people say, well, yeah, they get dirtier. But yeah, they do get dirty, but there's still some... You know, black when you're you're not gonna be it's black. Yeah. yeah. But the, you're still gonna have some high visibility you can see even if they get dirty from running them suppressed. That's a great right. point. So I'm a fan of that. Now yeah. I know you I'm sure you guys got a million black followers, but No, it, no, and uh, so the black follower works well in this because it is so bright it is the contrast there. Right. Um, right. but you know that's a great point on black mags, things like that. Black mags, so just keep that in mind. That's kinda one of my things that I try to throw out there to the not everybody does it. Right. Some gun companies do it. And I think some gun companies do it kind of by accident. The other thing it does help is if you have pistol mags in the back yours your round count holes right you can track because it's so much easier to see it it's so much easier to see it through the holes that's a great point yeah that is interesting Hmm. but uh but yeah we uh we're happy to have these mags so they're 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 a lot of fun and apparently a lot of people uh enjoy them as well so if they are still available depending on when this comes out uh, pick yourself up some because they're not that expensive either, which is pretty nice, and they run very well. Like I said, we that's mul- that's actually all we ran at Thunder Ranch, right? Mm-hmm. Where the U.S. Palm mags, yeah, yeah. And I mean, we beat the crap out of them, man. Yeah, they are, <laughs> we so. beat the crap out of the guns, uh, out of ourselves. I'm I'm still not fully recovered, I don't think, but uh, oh yeah, dude, yeah, my knees are still sore, but uh, but yeah, it was a, it was a good time. Yeah, it was, a, right. it was a lot of fun, and it's been a great time spending it with you today, Larry. Oh yeah, Absolutely. great time Clint, talking Katie. guns, man. I love it. Yeah, so we'll leave it off there, guys. Uh, again, classicfirearms dot com is where you can find everything that we've pretty much talked about today. Uh, maybe not an HK416 per se, but almost everything. And so classicfirearms.com for that. Again, check out all the different variations of the AP5 that we currently have. Let us know down in the comments section, how are you going to configure yours? Because uh, we talked about how Larry wants to configure his. You obviously see how I have mine configured. Uh, actually, Adam, before we go, how do you have yours configured? So I actually have a, I have a couple of them. Um, one of them... Oh, I, I have a couple of them. Do, 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 do. Yeah. <laughs> um, on my full size, I have uh, the JMAC, yes. the JMAC brace, um, yeah. and it, it's neat how they did it. There's actually the end cap is a pick rail, so the rear end yes. cap pick rail, so it <laughs> matches to that, which is a pretty cool little setup. Um, I have the Magpul handguard on the front. Yeah. Um, I did the Magpul safety selector. Yeah, um, I'm running the basic pick rail on the top, and I think what did I? What optic do I have on? That's sad. You know how you switch them out? Oh yes, um, I do. I have. Yeah, I have the Holison, the okay, Holison tube yeah. on mine. So it's it's nice. It runs well. Um, like I said, it's just been – I'm still running the original trigger. Um, oh, I got the binary in mine. He's got the I binary in his. So, yeah. um, and that's the only thing, you know, do you uh, – last question. The, the triggers on an MP5 are always going to be a little mushy. Yeah, you know, it's always mil spec. Because here's that something that um, people need to understand about HK is they always build their guns to, prop, to pass drop tests. Always. Yeah. Mm. There's certain protocols they do. They do bore obstruction protocols with all their all their firearms. Um, they do drop tests with all their firearms. So that's why a lot of times you'll see their stuff's a little on the heavy side, maybe a little bit more grit or more engagement than you want. Okay. And it's basically due to they're they're building even their their civilian guns to mil spec standards. Interesting. So it's a yeah. drop test thing. Okay, that makes sense. That's really what it is. So yeah, so I still have that, but I mean, with fifteen thousand rounds through it, I'm not complaining. You yeah, know? right. So, yeah. Um, and yeah, that's um, mine's pretty basically set up, and I love it. I mean, it's still it's my favorite gun in my bag. I mean, it's hands yeah, down. dude. It's they are a lot of fun. So ten out of ten would recommend. And again, Larry, thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, hey, I had a great time, man. Yeah. Anytime. Love yeah, it. Let, love talking guns, right? Oh is, yeah, it's not the worst. Yeah, it's not the worst. Get think of it all day. You can think of a worse job for sure, like you were I saying. Do it so, all day, Adam. Thanks again, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you again for tuning in for another episode of the CF Podcast, and we'll see you next time.